Hello friends, welcome back. Today we will be give some will give si sibling elements a unique key attribute. Uh, the last challenge showed how the map method is used to dynamically render a number of elements based on user input. However, there was an important piece missing from that example. When you create an array of elements, each one needs a key attribute set to a unique value. React uses these keys to keep track of which items are added, changed, or removed. This helps make the re-rendering process more efficient when the list is modified in any way. Keys only need to be unique between sibling elements. They don't need to be globally unique in your application. Uh, the code editor has an array with some front-end frameworks and a stateless functional component named frameworks. So here we have front-end frameworks. We've got a list of different frameworks. This is just an array. We have a function called frameworks. And within there, we have a constant uh, called render frameworks. Um, finish writing the map callback to return an, a list element for each framework in the front end frameworks array. This time, make sure to give each LI a key attribute set to a unique value. The LI elements should also contain text from front end frameworks. Normally, you want to make the key something that uniquely identifies the element being rendered. As a last resort, the array index may be used, but typically you should try to use a unique identification. Okay, so let's see here. We've got render frameworks. Render frameworks is equal to null. Okay, so we're going to do a similar thing to what we did last time. Uh, front end frameworks dot map and then we're going to go function and we'll pass that in now i'm going to pull this to the side so it's easier to see all of this and we're going to get rid of where it says change code here and so framework should render a unit un an unordered list element should render an h1 element the framework's component should it should exist on the page. Each list item element should have a unique key ID. Okay, so again, like just like we'll do last time, we're going to return, and we want to make it so our Ellie is here. Just stretch this out a little more so it's all in one line. And what do we want to return? We want to return a list element with uh, the element here, which means we're going to run through React, Angular, and now. So what it's saying is that we want to it needs to be unique somehow because each of these are just an li and so there's no way to know if which one's which programmatically um, each list list item should have a unique key attribute i mean do they want us to maybe go um a unique key attribute id is equal to a key ellie like that and then if we were to inspect here would that show up? Hmm. Okay, Ellie. Ellie doesn't come through. Like that? No. I wonder what it means when it says a unique key attribute. Each list item should have a unique key attribute. Key is equal to Ellie. Okay, and then if we inspect here, does that show up? It doesn't have key. What about ID? If we inspect here. Okay, that looks like it's legit. Um, yeah, so each one has its own... each. List item element should contain the text from front end framework. So it contains the text and it has an ID. Uh, let's see what this does. Okay, it looks like we, we're not passing in this right. Each list item should have a unique key attribute. List item for the frameworks. This time, make sure to give each li a key attribute set to a unique value. A key attribute? Key? Key doesn't render. What is a key attribute? Glow. 
global access keys. Atrius access key, like that. Access key, Ember, okay. And we should say make it uh, down case. I don't know that we need to make it down case. Okay, that broke it. Let's just see if this uh, gets us to pass the keys. So this, now we have access keys in there. So they should be, I mean, maybe that's what they wanted us to do. Each list item element should have a unique key attribute. What is a key attribute? List and keys react. Number double. Key attribute. Special attribute. Document. List number. Key is equal to number dot to string. Okay, so it should be key. Does that run fast with tests? Oh, wow, that's what it is. So a key attribute. I'm just unfamiliar with that. And it doesn't even show up on the if we inspect the code. So that's a unique one. So what it's doing is we're rendering the element um, to uh, the uh, key attribute. And so then perhaps maybe we'll be able to um, make adjustments to like knockout or ember or angular. Uh, yeah, sorry that took so long. I was just trying to sort it out in real time. Um, yeah, we'll go over it one more time. So here we're setting, we just have an array of words, you know, no, no big thing here. Here we're, we've got a function within it. We've got render frameworks. So this is just like a child component, I suppose. And we're returning a, a div and then we're, with, we're rendering the frameworks. And within the render frameworks, we're saying of all the front end uh, frameworks, we're going to map, which means we're going to go through them. And we're doing this old school style. The kind of new fancy way of doing this is like this. That's the ES6 way that you'll see a lot of people use. And so then you're going through with each one and you're saying, um, we're, we're making an array from, we're making an array and with each of the elements from the array that we have, we're adding a JSX element of list element with a key equal to the element and then the element within the key. And we're plugging that in to the new render frameworks. And then we do it for Angular. We make the key Angular and the value inside of it Angular. And then we, we do Ember. So render frameworks is an array holding a list of these JSX list items with the different words within them. And then when we do our return statement, we return that and it, we pass them all within the unit, unordered list column. So that's how we get this list items with uh, separate keys. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next lesson.